So folks, my goodness, things are moving very quickly. Earlier tonight, we talked about step one, which was that the special counsel went out and asked for Donald Trump, in effect, to be silenced, at least partially, given the danger he poses to society, public safety, and a fair trial. And then we saw Judge Chutkin drop the bomb on Donald Trump, and now she's already moved forward again, taking away his freedom in a fundamental way, putting his hands behind his back, taking him down just moments after actually putting the order on him because he already went ahead and broke it by complaining about it and all of that. Let's talk about this. This is all really important stuff and it's Donald Trump walking the line like he always does, except this time he lost his balance and fell right into trouble. Hit the like and subscribe button and let's jump into it. First with a clip that makes it clear that all of this is necessary because the Republican Party failed abysmally in doing their job with regard to Trump. People say privately all the time and not on TV all very often, something really bad is going to happen. Okay, shit's about to hit the fan in this country. Fox News had to veer away from a lunatic spewing hatred and death threats for Democratic officials in New York because of the migrant caucus. Everyone is on, uh, I don't even know the word. Everyone is knows that we're walking into something hideous and no one will do anything. I refuse to believe that nothing can be done. These are people getting their information in part because of the vacuum being created by people with, I don't even know if we call it a spine anymore. That might be an insult to spines. But there are still people out there with followings. He can go out and, and here's, here's the, what I want to ask you. Yeah. When something happens, what do you want to be able to tell your kids and grandkids you did? You good with nothing? You good with, I didn't do anything because I didn't think anyone would listen to me. Trump tweeted something mean about me someday because you did something. I tried to do something. Where are all of the Republicans who still have little slivers of a following in the cesspool that is the MAGA base? Well, look, all of the red lights are blinking about what is about to happen. And I think that's what makes what Jack Smith is doing so important, because he's saying, okay, um, right now, you know, this is a stress test for the entire criminal justice system. Look, the Republicans are not going to step up. They are not going to raise their hands. We know that Mitch McConnell is not going to come out of his bunker and say what he said after January 6th. But what I think was so powerful about this document, which I've just skimmed, is the way that Jack Smith basically sounds all of those alarms and says, look, this is not just theoretical. Look what he has done in the past. Look what he is doing right now. And and I know that the word, you know, gag order is going to be thrown around a lot. But what he's really saying is that Donald Trump needs to be held to the same standard of, of that any other criminal defendant would be held to, but also to alert the court to the extent of this campaign to discredit an attack and demean judges and jurors and prosecutors to discredit the entire process. This is not just one trial among any. Donald Trump is not just one defendant among any. This is a former president of the United States who is prepared Uh, to call out the Furies, who is prepared to stoke violence, to tell people, you know, come because it will be wild. And, you know, you you know, again, um, with all of these red lights blinking, um, the silence that we've gotten used to, I think, um, becomes less defensible because what happens in 2024 um, could be horrific. It is likely to be horrific. And all of the people that enabled it and rationalized it and looked the other way um, ought to be held to account in some way, at least in their conscience, if not politically. I mean, Glenn, (laughs) Judge Esther Salas sat at this table. Look, there was an alternative universe. I'm not saying this would have been full justice, but there's an alternative universe where the Republican Party aren't a bunch of fascist cowards. And they fundamentally put Trump in the trash bin in January of 2021. There was a moment they could have not not only upheld the impeachment in the Senate, but voted to ban him from office, which is one thing you can do in addition to um, uh, impeaching someone and removing them from office. You can also ban them from holding federal office again. But more than that, you can go out there and you can say 
We're done with him. But whether it was, especially in the House, McCarthy legitimizing Trump by going down to visit him at Mar-a-Lago just days really after J6 happened, and whether it was McConnell, who, you know, obviously is less pro-Trump than 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 Kevin, uh, nonetheless not backing the J6 committee, not, you know, to, to build a truly nonpartisan, you know, 9-11 style expert-driven, fact-driven commission on J6. He refused to do that, forcing Nancy Pelosi, frankly, to do what she did in building a committee that was mostly Democrats because Republicans, whether in the Senate or the House, refused to actually play a part. And it's they that created the scenario. And so it, you can't rely... All these Republicans out there who are like, this is a political issue and so therefore it should be dealt with politically. If you don't like Trump, you can punish him at the ballot box, defeat him in the primaries or defeat him in November. Well, they've already tried that. And what Republicans have shown is that they refuse to use the political tools they have to defeat and ban and banish Donald Trump. And so now the judge has to lock him up. And this further connects, guys to how he's been walking that line and falling off. Asking the judge to make some kind of decision here regarding those threats. So Jake, I mean, it's it's um, notable here that prosecutors are saying, you know, Donald Trump's words over the past several weeks, even though the judge in this case has told him not to make any public statements about this case, those words, not only has he made uh, those comments, but they have affected numerous witnesses as we're getting a look at here. We don't know exactly who, and we don't know exactly what statements have led to those intimidation and, and threats, but uh, significant news and um, accusations coming from the prosecutor's office. Interesting. Jessica Schneider, thanks so much. Let's bring in Tom Dupree. He was a principal deputy assistant attorney general for the George W. Bush administration. Tom, what do you, what do you make of this, uh, this filing? Well, first, it doesn't surprise me that that's the result on witnesses. I mean, the president has been outspoken. He has attacked judges, witnesses, everyone under the sun uh, through his public statements and social media. What will be interesting here, Jake, is what the judge does about it. We've seen so far from the way she runs her courtroom is she is committed to preserving the integrity of the judicial process. She wants to make sure the jury pool stays protected. She wants to make sure witnesses stay protected. I would expect she'll take this very seriously and that she may either admonish the president, she may instruct his lawyers to direct their client to knock it off. Um, I mean, in extreme cases, she can impose things like a gag order. She can even do things like revoke bail. So she has a menu of options open to her, and I suspect she'll start at the lower end to see if that will coerce his compliance and then gradually work her way up if that doesn't work. You know, what's so interesting about this is um, this comes right after uh, Senator Mitt Romney uh, announced he's not running for re-election. And in an excerpt of his book about Romney that was published in The Atlantic, uh, McKay Coppins has a section where Romney is recalling members of the House and Senate saying they're not going to vote to impeach or to convict Donald Trump after the insurrection uh, because they are afraid of what will happen to them or their families. In other words, intimidation from Trump works. Well, that may be the lesson that he's drawn from this. I mean, in the past, he's been very aggressive uh, going after everyone, political enemies, the media, citizens, uh, through these comments. They work. They can cause people to change their behavior. They can silence people. But it's a different world now when you're in court. In other words, it's one thing to make those comments in the context of a political campaign or the political fray. It's another thing to make it when you are a criminal defendant and you are making comments about witnesses who are poised to testify against you. Uh, Judge uh, Chutkin previously said any inflammatory statements could speed up the trial as well. You think that she might do that as well? Absolutely. I mean, if she thinks that there are witnesses out there who are getting scared or intimidated from testifying because of these comments, she may say, look, we need to move this thing up. Let's move it up a few months. So he, he's, it's a risky business. I mean, he's playing with fire to some extent making these comments because I don't think this is a judge who's going to stand for a lot of this stuff. Like, I'm always torn because on the one hand, I'm like, Donald Trump's really dumb. But on the other hand, I'm like, the man is an expert in ta at antagonizing people, right? So it's like, how much of this is on purpose and how much of this is compulsion? How much of this is Donald Trump <clears throat> not being smart enough to understand the danger he's putting himself in? And how much of it is, um, you know, maybe he understands, but just physically and, and mentally and emotionally cannot control himself. Like he cannot control himself like a toddler at doing these things or how much of it is almost cold and calculating where he's like, I don't care there. I'm going to dare them to do something and I'm going to come off looking good because they're either going to look weak when they don't respond or I'm going to look like a political victim if they do respond. Right. And I think that's such a big factor. And this is why Jack has to do what he's doing and Jack, why Jack's being strong and Chutkin's backing him.
many people, including myself, it is something that we've been wondering why it wasn't done earlier. Um, there is a lot of precedent for this. Uh, so um, as you remember, early on in the New York uh, civil case with respect to E. Jean Carroll, the federal judge took steps to protect the identities of jurors because of the concern about what Donald Trump would do in that civil case. Well, since that time, there have been threats in the Manhattan Alvin Bragg case to the prosecutors, to the judge, to their families. And as the um, filing today says, all of that has continued, whether it's respect to Georgia, whether it's respect to Florida, and obviously with respect to D.C. also. And the precedent, um, Ari, as you know, in D.C., which is cited by the prosecutors, is the Roger Stone case where um, the threats um, included posting a picture of the very eminent federal judge um, and having crosshairs next to her face, very similar to what we saw with respect to a bat that um, the former president had with respect to Alvin Bragg. And so what they're seeking is limited restrictions that, by the way, apply to all of the lawyers in the case. And they make that point. They say the lawyers are bound by this. They pointedly say that Donald Trump's lawyer, John Lauro, has violated the local rules on that by making these hmm. public statements and says that Donald Trump should not be able to do um, what his lawyers can't do and should not be making these statements. And obviously, this has to be taken very seriously by Judge Chutkin because you don't want to see violence erupt. And there obviously is a pattern. Of All of this is vital, guys. All of what we're seeing is absolutely vital. Trump needs to be taken down. And I'm glad Chutkin is taking him down and putting him away. It needs to happen because he needs to be silenced and he needs to be controlled. It sounds awful, but it's true. The man has proven time and time again that he cannot be given the freedom that a regular functioning adult has in the run-up to a criminal trial. Can't have it. And because he can't have it, he needs to be controlled. And <clears throat> I would say that even about a regular person who is trashing the judge on social media, but with Trump as noted there, it would be bad if it was one regular defendant, but Trump is the head of a cult-like movement. His evil spurs millions. It's it's it cannot be tolerated. <clears throat>